Hello, hello all. Thank you for joining in. I'm trying to share real quick. All right, this is Shamara Yancey with the Kingdom Mindset. And normally, uh, Evangelist Dion Crump would do it on Monday. She would be the host on Mondays at 7. And I would normally be the host on Thursdays at 7. But I had to switch up the timing. So I'm doing it today at 12 at noon central standard time uh i'm just gonna let you know now if you have any questions or concerns or prayer requests whatever it is uh please send all questions or whatever to kingdom mindset 2018 at gmail.com that is again kingdom mindset 2018 at gmail.com uh, if you have not followed the other teacher uh, evangelist Dion Crump, please follow her at Walk It Out D. That is again Walk It Out D. Um, today our chapter is in uh, chapter 13, and the topic is the voice of the angels in the court. The voice of the angels in the court, and um, I just I love this chapter because it's uh telling me that i have help there are things that we cannot do in our bodies in our fleshy bodies so he's given us help to partner with us the prayers that we prayed to partner with us and do what needs to be done i'm just gonna be uh i'm gonna go around in the uh, the book and i'll try to let you guys know what page i'm on again this is the book if you would like to purchase a book, Operating in the Courts of Heaven by Robert Henderson. And also, uh, he has a lot of teachings on um, YouTube. So you can just look up his name and uh, you'll be able to find a lot of uh, work that he has done. Uh, he goes to many churches and train them on the access that we have when we go to the courts. We don't have to receive uh, the negative verdict that we have received by the enemy, by the princes of the air, we can go straight to the king. And he's showing us how we have that authority, how to do it. And um, that's that's something that, that we uh, should operate in and function in readily. I'm going to pray before we get started. Lord, I thank you for everyone that is chiming in right now. Everyone that is sharing. God, I thank you for, for iron sharpening iron to change the consonants of his friend. I thank you right now for this teaching. I ask that you speak loud and clear that your servants will hear you, God. In the name of Jesus, do what you want to do. Have your complete and total way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so again, we are on chapter 13, the voice of the angels in the court. And it says, in the courts of heaven, the evidence is very important. When you are in court or if you know someone that is in court or if you watch uh, court shows, the evidence, the, the person is innocent until proven guilty or they're guilty until proven innocent but they have to have what evidence they have to have evidence to back up their storage if they say i didn't do it or i wasn't there where is the evidence where is the evidence and so um it's saying first off running out going the first premises is we have to have evidence. We have to have evidence. And um, I'm reminded of Adam and Eve. And we brought this up before in the course of heaven. With Adam and Eve, the serpent was already in the garden. But Adam had already got the instructions. And he passed it. He, they got the information, the instructions of what they should and should not do. But the enemy was there recording. Okay, I'm going to see if they're actually going to be obedient or disobedient to the instructions that they receive. And that's what the enemy is doing 
even right now. He is as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So he's going to watch us. He is watching to see are we doing what we have been instructed not to do or to do. Um, whether it's in the word of God, whether we receive that word at our assembly are we actually executing it? If if we were told not to do something, are we being disobedient? He's recording. We have someone that is recording our every action. No, he is not omnipresent, but he is watching to see can he uh, alter what we are requesting? Can he block what we are requesting dependent on our actions, our works, Um and if there are is no evidence, if there is no evidence to prove that the enemy is right and that he has the legal rights to us, then his is thrown out because he has no evidence. He has no evidence. And so the first thing that we must do, and we we state this like in the first three sessions, is repent. It's not, uh, you know, if you're thinking, well, I didn't do anything. So as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if we were thinking something in our heart that is contrary to the word of God, then that is going to warrant us not getting what we need, not getting the verdict that we need, not getting the answer that we need. So the first thing that we have to do in order to render a decision that we are praying for, that we are petitioning for, is repent. Repent, repent, repent. Um, I'm going to go to... Uh, it, I'm going to read this. It says, it is our job to agree with the decisions until legal precedents are being made. We have to agree. Like, we we can't, I'll say this. We can't, because some people have actually visited the court. Or if, if Holy Spirit has dropped it, oh, remember, um, when you thought about this, so is the man thinking this? Or, so if, if you pondered on something that was not godly, that did not represent him. And we cannot say, oh, I didn't do it. Well, you thought about it. We thought about it. So we're guilty of that, Lord. I did not cast down that vain imagination. Please forgive me. Just repent. Just He is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins and to cleanse us of all of our unrighteousness. It says, uh, he needs the input and the agreement from the church that's us he needs the agreement from the church on the earth because man has been given the authority man that's us human man or woman human has been given the authority here on the earth so we have to execute the authority that's found in um psalms 115 and 16 and it says the heaven even the heavens are the lord but the earth has he given it to the children of men that's us he has given us the earth he's given the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof but he has given us authority here on the earth he has given us authority so we have to execute that when we don't use our authority when we don't use the power that he has given us as his agents, then we are giving it to the enemy. Even though we, we're not thinking that we are, we are because we're not using it. We're not executing what's ours. So we're giving it to the enemy. So it seems as it's as if he has power or control or authority over us. But in actuality, the truth is we have power. We have greater is he that is within us than he that is within the world. So we have the greater one living on the inside of us. Satan was kicked down. He was dethroned from his high place of authority, from his high rank. But we have authority here in the earth because now he's in our space. He's in our space. So we have the authority. Uh, another scripture that uh, that uh, this talks about 
is found in Colossians 1 and 16. It says, for by him all things, listen, all things created that are in the heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, the things that are attacking us, the invisible things that are attacking us, where the thrones is talk is talk. I'm gonna uh talk about this further because it talks about the thrones, the dominions, or principalities, and the power. So the, those are four things: thrones, dominions, principalities, and powers. All things were created through him and for him and that is in colossians uh 1 and 16 okay uh people normally think that oh uh, the principalities and uh the the dark the, the powers of darkness they're they're only they started off as satanic or demonic forces, but in actuality, they are fallen angels that are ruling now here. So they started off as one thing, but because of their decision, because that's even with us, he has a way, he has a plan set for us, plans of peace and out of evil and to bring us into a hope and expect it in. But when we go in our own way and when we do not acknowledge him, he cannot direct us on the path that he has chosen for us. So those angels, in fact, did not go into direction, into the direction that were chosen and predestined for him. And he wants us to go into the direction that was chosen for us the first one which is thrones can be found in daniel 7 and 1 and they are um archangels okay um and lucifer he was one he was that that's what he was before he was kicked out and that can be found in uh daniel 7 and 9 and then um the second one is dominions which are cherubims, okay? And that can be found in Exodus 25, 21 through 22. Again, that is Exodus 25, 21 through 22. Then you have the principalities, which can be found in Isaiah 6, 1 through 3, and those are the seraphim angels. All of these were actually angels in existence in the heavenly realm, but they got kicked out because of disobedience, just as Adam and Eve were kicked out of the garden because of disobedience, just as if we can get kicked off of the path and direction that we are going to because of our disobedience. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land, but, but, if you refuse and rebel with a sword, shall you be devoured. That's the word of God, and it still stands. And then the last one is uh, powers, which can be found in uh, Psalms 103 and 20. And these are dispatching deputy angels. Dispatching deputy angels. So I'm going to go with the first one, uh, thrones and in the Greek, it means those that are seated, okay? Think about it. Think about areas in your uh, in your city. I'm in the city of Houston. So think about areas in your city that may be poverty-stricken. We went on uh, a, a ride around the Beltway 8 here in Houston, and we did a prayer. We prayed continuously from point A to point A. D because we did north, south, east, and west. So that's four areas. But in that whole area, every area had a specific reigning force or power that was governing over that area. So when we think about thrones, what is seated in that area? What what think about your own again, your, your uh ghettos and your Hi, you know, your wealthy uh, neighborhoods, uh, wh what is sitting there? What is sitting there? Um, uh, archangels, oh, listen, listen, this, I love this. Archangels are first in rank 
and political, political power, political power, archangel, angels, political power, first in rank. Uh, this can be uh, found first in, uh, I, I think that was Psalms versus, I need to find it first because I don't want to tell you guys wrong, but I'll come back to it. Yeah, I'll just come back to it. But um they carry great power. Um think about the again, I say the the whole the people in that territory. If it's a ghetto area, it may be poverty stricken, it may be the crime rates may be high, the educational system may be very uh distraught. Um, but that's what's been governing over that area. Think about a strong man. What a strong a strong man does not just take over by itself. He wants to get others. So think about that throne. If he if he's sitting if if the archangel is sitting on that throne or the demonic force is sitting on that throne, more than likely he has other demonic forces that is working in proxy with him to make sure that it is complete and utter darkness in that area. Um the second thing is dominions. Three things can be revealed about cherubs because you remember I said that cherubs would be in the dominion uh vicinity and the first thing that is that they are anointed uh, they, they were anointed, okay? The, the cherubims were anointed. So, you got to think about, um, I'll say prophecy, okay? With prophecy, we're going to get our information from God, okay? From the books in heaven. But where are they getting their instructions from? Where are they getting their, their words from if they are not? prophets, if they are the soothsayer, if they are the psychics, if they are the palm readers. So it's the same thing. The demonic is the dominions have changed forces. They have changed their rulers. They have changed their leaders. Um, they work in the supernatural. But that's why discernment needs to be peaked up in in ourselves so we can discern what's from God and what's not from God because we do not want to it's like they will promote the counterfeit you know oh they want a sign I can give them a sign and a lying wonder that's what they promote signs and lying wonders okay we just want to make for sure that we are readily identifying um those the actions of those type of dominion and that can be found in hebrews 12 and 22 and also ezekiel 28 and 14 and then we have the principalities uh and when you first hear principalities you think of again dem oh that's a demonic power and uh demonic force but everything started in heaven Everything started in heaven, but they got kicked out. They got kicked out. Um, and it's it's like with us, if we are if we are doing the will of God and if we are striving to to be on the path and uh be on the path that he has designed for us, but then we go and we start doing that which is not appealing to God, the in to God, the enemy is going to flip that upside down. He's going to flip it upside down and get us kicked out of the place, the secret place that we were once in, that we once occupied. And that's what he wants to do. He was kicked and dethroned out of heaven. And now he wants to occupy earth. If he can occupy the earth and vessels, then he can occupy that vicinity, that atmosphere that he is in. Uh, the principalities had the seraphim angels, and that can be found in Isaiah 6, 1 through 3. Uh, remember, listen, I, I thought this was so amazing. Again, this is in the book, uh, Operating in the Courts of Heaven by Robert Henderson. 
um, I, all I thought about, you know, in the beginning, you know, with Adam and Eve and the serpent deceive Eve, even though they were, they got the instructions, but the curse that was given to the serpent is you're going to crawl on your belly for the rest of your days or whatever. Okay. Well, not whatever, but y'all know what I mean. And so it says the original meaning of uh, that seraphim, seraphim was a flying serpent. Okay. So if it was a flying serpent, that means that what we see now, what we behold now, the serpents on his belly, he lost his authority. He lost his authority to fly, to soar, to go to and from. He is now the, like they say, the scum of the earth. Now he is low down. He has receded. And think about even in the natural, well, the spirit, even us, okay? If we are once in a high place, but we are disobedient to God, what happens? There is a change we're not reigning as we once were. We're not in the place or position or carry the authority that we once had. And so that was one of his punishments to be crawling on his belly. But before, because he was a seraphim in the heavenly realm, he was actually a flying serpent. And later on, that uh, serpent has transformed to dragons so uh that that's another thing that we have to think about like a whole dragon you know you know uh if if we are made in the image of the invisible god you know that didn't come from him you know that that's not we should know that that's nothing that will reflect our god so what where does it come from and so the last one is um powers okay this words mean that there is a uh, authority okay governmental authority when we think about powers okay this is found in psalms 103 let me see uh, do i have the reading for that yeah psalms 103 and 20 says Bless the Lord, you his angels who excel in strength. That's what we need. There are things that we are praying for that we ourselves as humans cannot do. So we need a higher power. We are not at all. We are not ever praising or exalting or glorifying an angel. We are partnering with the angels we are praying to god he's sending us help and and they are going and doing the bidding that we are praying for think about when daniel prayed he said i heard you the first time but then the prince of persia held up your help your angel your help that is our help we're not praying to the angels so if an angel if you see an angel and the angel tells you to bow down to it or that's not an angel sent by God, and and that's when we, you go into warfare, bind, rebuke, and cast out. That is not of God. That is a false evidence. Okay, false evidence. But again, in Psalms one hundred three and twenty, it says, "Bless the Lord, you His angels who excel excel in strength, who do His word." It's important to do His word. His word who do his word. That, that means they make action. They don't, you know, they're not like us. <laughs> they don't ponder and debate. Oh, well, what was that? You, Lord, they do his word. Lord, let me do your word. Let me do, be a, a hearer and a doer of his word. Many times we hear the word, but we do not execute the word. We do not do the word, which causes, if if God wants to send something down that is not going to be released until we actually execute and do what he is saying to do. The last uh, sentence says, heeding the voice of his word. This is excellent. It says, 
who excel in strength. So where there is weakness, we can ex excel. Think about us. Okay, we're not talking about the angels now. We're just talking about us. They can excel. We can excel in strength as we do his word. That's going back to the willing and obedient. We'll eat the good of the land. That sounds like if you're eating and you're not starving and there is not a famine in your in your household, in your region, in your bloodline, then that means you are excelling in strength due to you reading the word of God, doing to do, the word. The word is bread. The word is manna. You are eating. You are taking supper with the word of God. It's being planted in you. If you do not eat, okay, you are not going to grow at all. You have to eat the, the bread of life. His word is the bread of life. It gives us life. And it says heeding to the voice. That means being obedient. That, that means doing what he says to do. To the word of God. We have to do what he says to do for the word of God. And we're not going to know the word of God if we don't read the word of God. We have to know the word of God. We have to read the word of God. When Think about when they go to the courts. They are going to the courts with the evidence. The enemy. But what does his word say? Well, Lord, in your word says that as I repent before you, that you are faithful and just to forgive me of all of my sins and to cleanse me of all of my unrighteousness. So that means the enemy cannot find any fault in me because I'm repenting according to your word. We have to know the word of God. There are many functions. One of them is the land scrolls. I love this part. He says land scrolls that carry the judgment of the Lord against anything that is standing in the way of God's kingdom. So that's anything that is standing in your way that is prohibiting you from obtaining, from gaining, from excelling, from doing, from going, from being they're going to be able to block that because they're handing out scrolls, okay? I'm going to read this. Uh, this is in Zechariah four, uh, 5, 1 through 4. And it says, Then I turned and raised my eyes and saw there a flying scroll, okay? Remember, at the beginning, I said he's releasing. So if it was a flying scroll... He's releasing the scrolls. And he said to me, what do you see? So I answered, I see a flying scroll. Its length is 20 cubits and its width is 10 cubits. Then he said to me, this is the curse that goes out over the face of the whole earth. Every thief shall be expelled. Oh, that is a promise. That is a promise to me. That is a promise to you. If he has been, if the enemy has been, okay, his job is to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. His job, his job, okay, that, that from the beginning of the time, of time, up until now, since he landed on earth, until now, and you know, he has a couple of more years. Is to kill, steal, and destroy. But when the scrolls are released, when the scrolls are released, we have the authority because the scrolls are released. Every, it says every thief is going to be expelled. Lord, you said according to your word. The thief will be expelled. So let the thief that stole steal no more. He does not have that authority. If he is stealing my peace, if he has been stealing my joy, if he has been stealing my, my concentration, if he's been stealing uh, the, the my relationships, they are always falling to the ground. There, There's a thief among me in my territory that is blocking, that is stopping me from proceeding. He has to cease and desist. Cease. And desist, okay? It says, um, this is a curse, is the curse that goes over the face of the whole earth. 
Every thief shall be expelled according to this side of the scroll. So what's in the word of God, the scroll, what has been released, the scroll is our verdict. That's what we need. That's what we have been petitioning for. Every perjurer shall be expelled according to that side of it. I will send out a curse. He will be an enemy to our enemy and an adversary to our adversary. He is our father, a good, good father. He knows how to give good gifts to his children. So he's not going to just be, you know, God sitting up high, looking down low. Oh, they're, they're going through again. They were going through three years ago. They were going through five years ago. It's a cycle. Oh, this cycle hasn't been broken. Well, I guess all, that's all I was able to do is, is make them and that's it. No. We have authority. He's waiting on us. He's actually waiting on us to do what needs to be done so that he can uh, dispatch his angels. He's waiting on us to use our mouth, to use the word of God. It's like he, he's giving us a, a cheat list. If, if you've been in school, I used to be a teacher. So if you've been in school and you have a... You, you see the students try to write the answers on the desk or they have a little card or a sheet of paper that they are A, B, F, G. You know, they're trying to write the answers, but he's giving us a cheat. He's giving us a, a script, a cheat, a cheat sheet, if you will. And that's the Bible. That's the word of God. That's the bread of life. That's why we have to eat on it. That's why we have to get our nourishment from it. So that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will rise up a standard. And that standard is going to be the word of God that will always supersede and excel over the enemy. It says, I will send out the curse, says the Lord of hosts. It shall enter into the house of the thief. Okay. It shall enter into the house of the thief and the house of the one who swears falsely. Wait a minute. Who, listen, and the one who swears falsely in my name. In my name. So, okay, like uh, some children would say they're, they are lying. Miss, they are lying. I didn't do that. Miss, they, they want to they wanna convince me that they are telling the truth, then I have to discern, okay, which child is telling the truth of partiality? A partial truth is a whole lie. That's what it is for me. But um, it says, and the house of the one who swears falsely by my name, it shall remain in the midst of his house and consume it. Consu that means consume, destroy, d d obliterate. Okay, with its timber and stones, he's going to cease and desist the operation of the enemy. And that's in Zechariah 5, verses 1 through 4. What's needed, as I said it at the beginning of this broadcast, and as it was stated on several other teachings, we have to repent. We cannot think within ourselves, oh, I didn't do anything. Listen. We want to, we want to, there's no fault. My hands are clean so that we can get the verdicts that we need so that, uh, the Lord will, will give us the verdict that we need and things will function and operate as we are desiring it. Yes. So we, now we do need to live line upon line, precept upon precept. We can't live any way we want and then expect for God to just hand us down. Remember at the beginning, what did I say? If you are willing and obedient, we will eat the good of the land. But if we refuse and rebel with the sword, shall we be devoured? That is all. That is all. Okay. Uh, I'm going to read Acts 3 and 19 going to verse 21. It says, repent. Okay. Repent, therefore, and be converted, be, com be changed, evolve, okay, that your sins have a change of mind, that your sins may be blotted out. This, we, he said that your sins may be blotted out. 
Meaning, I can't even see it anymore. If he can't sit in and see it anymore, what the enemy's saying is null and void. He doesn't have, oh, remember on this day, and he's looking, the Lord is looking. Well, uh, I see that they repented for that, so no, I don't find any fault because they repented. So I don't see what you're seeing because it's not here. And when he turns his screen to show it to the enemy while he's trying to accuse you, the accuser of the brethren, there's nothing there. It says, so that times of refreshing, we want the times of refreshing to come. If we have been in a state of turmoil, if we have been in a state of poverty, if we have been shaken, the times of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord, the presence of the Lord, and that he may send Jesus Christ, who was preached to you before whom the heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things. He will restore. He will restore. But what, what, what must we first do? Repent. Repent. It's, it's not hard. Lord, forget. He, listen, even if you think that, you know, I, I don't know what else is apprehending uh, what, you know, I need, what, what my requests have been. All we have to do is ask Holy Spirit to reveal to us what has been apprehending us. And when he tells us what has been apprehended us, what we have been pondering about, what we have been thinking about that is contrary to the word of God, then, okay, we can catch that in the future. Okay. We, we're not going to continue on. Shall I continue on in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. No, we're not going to continue on. Well, well, I repented and then you go pick it back up. No, we're not going to pick it up again. And Lord, we, we, help me not to. That's the, the request that we should ask God while we're in his presence. Lord, help me not to continue that what that which you're delivering me from. What has been my stronghold? What has been uh, a net for me? Help me not to fall back into that same trap. Uh, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. And that again is in Acts 3, 19 through 21. And uh, this, that verse that I just, that verse that I just read, those verses, uh, there were four steps that he talked about. The first one was repentance. The second one was what? Refreshing. He said the times of refreshing will come. You're going to be refreshed. But first we're going to repent. And it looks like, oh, uh, we shifted from the angels. Well, the angels can't help us if we don't first what? Repent. Okay. I repent. My refreshing is come. That I feel my help coming on. My refreshing has come, my restoration has come, and then the return. The angels will come back with the return for what we pray for. They're not going to go out and say, oh, we couldn't do it, Lord, because we, we don't want to give the angels something to say negative because of our own works. We, we don't want them to say, well, I couldn't do it because they didn't do what you wanted them to do, or they started acting in obedience, or they went somewhere saying something that they should not say or they did not represent you correctly and according to your word i cannot hand out what is supposed what they have prayed for according to your word i have to be about you know we say here that we want to be law abiding citizens they are abiding law abiding citizens it's like they they do it we want to be doers of the word not hearers only but doers and not not hearers of what we want to hear <laughs> and, and taking out what well, this is important to me. I, I think I'm going to do. No, we have to eat the whole roll, the whole scroll. We have to eat it all. We have to eat it all. We cannot take out what is what we believe is feasible for us and um, what we don't believe is feasible for us and i'm getting ready to close i didn't yeah i'm getting ready to close us out um but also 
in this chapter is talk it talked about the ecclesia or the ecclesia um and it was saying that we as a body need to come together corporately we as a body of believers as christians need to come together corporately in order to execute the judgments the, and get the verdicts that we need here on earth. Why? As I said, it stated in the beginning, because we have the authority. We are kingdom agents. We are kingdom campaigners. We are kingdom ambassadors. Okay? There is a great, we were sent here to colonize the earth and to make the earth Look just like heaven. So if we are, if we as believers are not seeing a reflection of the invisible God here on the earth, then that lets us know that we have to come together corporately. We have to come together corporately. Where there is unity, there is strength. Where there is unity, there is strength. Um... He's not looking for us. And it talks about this. Please get the book. Again, operating in the courts of heaven, Robert Henderson. He's not looking for us to build great tabernacles and cathedrals that have a great number of people. We don't know if they're a great body of believers. They don't know if they are a great body of believers. There's nothing sown into them to make them become a great body of believers. They do not but know the power or authority that they possess. So they're just there and they can get bombarded and tormented by the enemy because they don't know what they possess you have to know what you possess greater is he that is within us than he that that is within the world greater is he that is within you you are a carrier you are a carrier of the word of god of the truth there there's no fault in it's in him of the truth the truth is this that's going on in my community does not have the authority to reign over me if your community is raining rain, heavily with fear due to crime, due to uh, uh, rape, if so, so now it's producing fear. That is not of God. He did not give us the spirit of fear, but that of love, power, and of a sound mind. So if He didn't give us fear, and if my mind is no longer sound, that came from the enemy. So now I need to I need to pray. I need to pray quickly. I don't need to just say, "Our Father which art in heaven." No, I need to, I need to go. I need to go there, and I'm commissioning you. Go there. We we've already been commissioned according to the Word of God. Go, go. There's, there's nothing holding you back. You don't need uh, some type of status uh, in your, in your particular house of worship. You don't need to be on a, a economic status. Go. You are a child of God. You are a king. You are a queen. And He, your Lord, our Lord, is the King of Kings. So He has even more authority. Okay. So, and he wants, he, it's, you know, I heard one time the angels are just bored. Like, will, will she just call me already? Like, I'm ready to work. I already know what I have to do. I already have this stuff. Can, can they just call me already? Or, you know what? I, I, um, uh, someone had visited heaven, went to a room, y'all listen went to a room that was filled with body parts, arms, legs, eyes, ears, um, organs. It, it was not an organ donor. No, this, this was brand new, never been used before, okay? It was not... We, we don't want to put the Lord on the layway plan like, I got to keep paying. We don't have to keep paying. Say it. Believe it. Let it come down and ask God, what, what am I doing and wh what is hindering my voice from being heard? If it's going to the ceiling and coming back down, Lord, I need you to remove this residual 
the uh, the residual atmosphere of darkness from out of my way so that my prayers can reach you but back to the room um when the person was visiting heaven he said you know what what's going on in in this room and he was told by the angel hey th th this is a room a storehouse of different body parts that are waiting 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 to be rendered to the earthly realm, but the people are not asking for us. We have to ask and keep asking, knock and keep knocking, seek and keep seeking. We don't ask one day and, you know, get in seekers mode for maybe two weeks and then stop. How? How? Think about a bill collector, okay? The bill collector is going to ask for their money. Why? Because you have our product. You have something that belongs to us, so we're going to keep asking for what belongs to us because you're not you're not freely giving it to you, so we're going to make a reminder. So they're, they're, they're asking, they're knocking, they're seeking a response from you. So that's the same thing. We got to ask and keep asking and seek and keep seeking and knock and keep knocking. Do not be in despair. Do not be uh in a, a depressed state because when we get into that depressed mode we're falling into the traps and the snares of the enemy and so uh if you have loved ones or if you yourself are in a situation and you need a healing you need a bomb to hit your body you need if if, if you've been on crutches or if if, if your your mind has been in disarray. You know it may not be a physical thing where oh I I need you can't we cannot be like the Wizard of Oz. Oh I need a new brain. Well yeah you can in a way because I need you to transfuse and transform the way my mind is. I need you to give me something that is functioning and operating the way that I was first designed as your child as your son as your daughter okay and um i love how this said at the end if if you say the our father prayer the our father's prayer and it says at the end uh your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven but here is a command and we have to take authority it says come who who come? Your kingdom, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we're saying, come your kingdom and do as you will on earth as it is in heaven. Come your kingdom and do as you will on earth as it is in heaven. Even on this earthen vessel, okay? Do what you want to do. Do, Lord, do what you want to do. Let me totally submit and surrender so that you can do what you want to do in this earth as it is in heaven, as in this earthen vessel, even as it is in heaven. And that completes our teaching for today. Um, Saturday the 24th is actually going to be our last day for teaching out of for uh doing our book uh i'm sorry um I, I missed this i know somebody was trying to say something uh but we're gonna be doing our last teaching out of this book uh operating in the courts of heaven by robert henderson on saturday on the 24th now instead of being on the uh, Periscope, we're going to actually be on Facebook so that we too can partner up and you can see us both at the same time. Okay. And that's going to be on Facebook on my uh, channel. And I'll, I'll say it, you know, right before we go live, it shall speak. It shall speak. So if you are not following, it shall speak on Facebook Follow It Shall Speak on Facebook because that's where we're going to put it. That's where we're going to do this closing chapter to actually um, go through uh, chapter 15. It's going to be so if you have the book or if you want to um, get the book, I 
get the book. I recommend you getting the book. Well, nobody is saying that, oh, you've been a believer all this time and you don't know what you're doing. No. We just want to get weapons, new weapons that we do not have or we did not know about or we were not secure in. And we want to be able to do, do battle and win. We want to be victorious. This is not the season that we're going to be, um, you know, tucking tail and running because of what the enemy is trying to do. Um, I'm going to make one more announcement and then I'm going to close us out uh, starting in March. Again, this is going to be on, uh, I'm doing a book reflections and the very first book is called the esther anointing by michelle mclean walters and it's the first day is actually going to be on the 4th of march so it's going to be on sundays and tuesdays at seven o'clock p.m central standard time that is mondays sundays i'm sorry sundays and tuesdays seven o'clock central standard time if you would like to be a part of that group go to book reflections by virtue speaks i'm i'm sorry it's not by virtue speak with virtue speaks so that's book reflections with virtue speaks and um we're gonna be doing uh book reflections with that it's similar to a book review uh, I'll post, I, I've already posted the books that we're going to be going through uh, so that you can either uh, buy the hard copy or if you want the Kindle edition, it's totally up to you. I'm trying to pull this up now so that I can show you guys um, the page. Okay. Let me... Okay, and so that's what it says, uh, searching for the hidden treasures book reflections and uh, disregard the, the date that's on the uh, is going to be again on Sundays and Tuesdays at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, and we're going to be doing that on the Facebook social uh, network. Uh, I'm going to pray for you guys and then uh, pray that you have a blessed day. But Lord, right now, I thank you for every person that has tuned in and every person that will tune in on the replay. Lord, I ask you right now to let them become your gover governmental uh, agents, your ambassadors, your campaigners, that they will not be uh, in despair are depressed or oppressed because of the hands of the enemies, the demonic power that has been around them, the dominions that have been around them. Let them step into the authority that you have given us all. Your word declares, greater is he that is within us than he that is within the world. God, let us know the authority that we already have function and operate in it completely, God. In the name of Jesus, your intercessors, your warriors, your gatekeepers, God, Lord, let us do what it is that we need to do, God, in the name of Jesus, that we will not be discouraged. And even as we learn more, that iron will always sharpen iron to change the continents of his reign. Lord, we thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. You guys have a blessed day and I will hopefully see you guys on Saturday. I'm going to get back on later just so I can show you how to get to the page or what the page actually looks like. You guys have a blessed day.